Okay, thank you everybody for being here this morning. Um, again, Marco sends his apologies. He's actually bedridden with a, a horrible case of the flu. And uh, for those of you expecting Marcos, yes, he is taller, he is more charming, and uh, uh, he has more data than I do right now. We're in the middle of a collaboration that we think is gonna be very productive. And I'll talk to you about some of that data, also add some data from our <clears throat> GCHRT platform all around a, a, a petroleumics or petroleum characterization uh, paradigm. And then uh, upon my completion, uh, Yuri Carrillo will talk about a software package that uh, is, is part of this collaborative effort and part of our effort to provide characterization tools for petroleum analysis. Uh, why the collaboration with the Thompson Lab? Um, well, and that's Marcos's lab. You know, the lush green forests of Brazil, the banks of Lake Michigan. I mean, the obvious tie is petroleum and mass spectrometry, right? I mean, am, I, am I missing something? <clears throat> anyway, outline of the talk uh, for the API section, so the Sidious portion of the discussion, will be why are we looking at, at petroleum, why is it characterized? Uh, some of you already know that, but it'll give us our give you our perspective. TOF versus FT, uh, some of the capabilities of the zigzag TOF, as, as Marcos refers to it. I won't get into that too much because Nick already provided that introduction. And then actually some comparative data acquired side by side, same samples, uh, trying to demonstrate the same information content from those. So why, why characterize? Um, well, there's, there's a lot of diversity in petroleum reserves, and that's important to, to oil companies. Uh, new sources, such as the oil sands, the age of the reserves, and the heteroatomic distribution amongst those. Um, the characterization can ultimately affect yields, processability, and mobility, all of which ultimately uh, cost money. And that's important to all businesses, petroleum included. Analytical techniques that have been used historically are NMR and GC with uh, FID for the quantitative analysis and MS and elemental selective detections uh, for the characteristic aspects. Also physical techs, <coughs> excuse me, physical techniques and then of recent, relatively recent, APIMS with FTMS really leading the way. Uh, it has been king for decades and I call resolving power greater than 100,000. It's far greater than 100,000 and uh, if you go visit Alan Marshall's lab, you can see really big numbers and a really big instrument. The challenges that have, have driven the variety of these techniques and the approaches are the similarity. Uh, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur. That's pretty much it. But also the complexity. The way those are pieced together create a myriad of products that require a high level resolution and very high accuracies to facilitate their characterization with a discrete number of analytes being in excess of tens of thousands. Uh, the distillation of information is though ultimately what's important and that's where the software comes in. M over Z's don't matter, I don't think, to petroleum engineers. If you give them an M over Z, they're probably just going to look at you funny. <coughs> so what's important? Why a mass spectrometer? Speed and simplicity, okay? It takes just a couple minutes to run the experiment. Uh, that's actually the easy part. The hard part is the dissemination of information. The performance needs, uh, you need to have effective resolving power, enough to, to get the information out. You need stable mass accuracy, and you need general system stability. If you have drift in uh, resolving power or in mass accuracy, you will not have a successful experiment. Ultimately, though, as I said, it's information content that's important. So why, why mess with FTMS if it's been around for so long and it's been successful? Well, it's expensive, um, approaching a million dollars, and it's needy. You have to feed it. You have to feed it liquid nitrogen, liquid helium, and then it occupies a lot of space. Um, this is our, our F, <coughs> excuse me, FFP, our high resolution folded flight path technology. I won't go through the descriptions here because Nick covered that quite well. But I will point out a couple of, 
couple of key attributes in its performance, and that's around resolving power and how it performs versus other opportunities. So here is a green, in the green, a resolving, a resolving power profile or resolution profile for the HRT versus the conventional TOF. Um, we have a flatter profile because of our long flight path, more forgiving, and uh, at lower M over Z, that provides a higher resolving power than traditional TOFs. Here is a comparison versus FT instruments. Those have the well-characterized dip in resolving power as a function of M over Z. Again, the HRT, uh, we have a relatively flat profile, so uh, we provide some advantages and opportunities at higher M over Zs versus an FT. And the experiments that we'll talk about today are strictly in ultra-high resolution mode on the Sidious, which is about a PPM mass accuracy and 100,000 or higher resolving power. Um, for the sake of brevity, I'm going to skip this slide, uh, just compares and contrasts. And I mentioned information content previously. So this is about spectral capacity. What can you get out of an experiment? So this is an FTMS in red, and this is you know, how many fully resolved spectra can you get as a function of M over Z? You can see at your low M over Zs, yeah, you probably get some benefit here, but it makes up out here where the TOF provides more information. And then if you look at it in bins, you can actually see that between 250 and about 1,000, uh, the TOF actually starts to provide more information content, which is really where the petroleum characterization uh, is, is most efficient and most significant. So experiments, again, very simple experiment. Uh, in this case, it was a direct infusion or direct analysis, either with a syringe or a nanomate uh, interface to either Vasidius or to a 7.2 Tesla FTMS made by another company. And the data were processed using PetraOrg software brief depiction, and that's, that's the one good thing about petroleum. There's rarely a scarcity of sample. When you get, get a 55 gallon drum as your sample submission, that's pretty good. So for spectral comparison, let's get to the data. Okay, that's really why you're here. Um, this is the, an FTMS. This is an HR TOF at the bottom. Um, same sample, done very close to the same time, same preparation or similar preparation. Resolving power about 100,000 here, and FTMS 400,000, but uh, at, at the lower mass range. There are differences in the distribution, but remember, there's very significant differences in the ion optics between these, and we have other data that's not included here that, that we can certainly share or discuss, where we can change this profile, or they can change their profile by changing ion optical parameters. Um, that cause biases in, in where the distribution of M over Zs are. So I'd ask you to not focus too much on this, but focus on the meat, which is the M over Zs, the measurement, the information content. So what I've got here is a zoom in of a tenth M over Z window from these two spectra to compare M over Zs and information content. If you don't see an M over Z, you're not going to get an identification, clearly. And if you compare the two, FTMS at the top, HR TOF at the bottom, they're all but indistinguishable. From a performance perspective, um, mass accuracy stability here across the M over Z range, uh, approximately less than one ppm, uh, RMS 0.63 for the FTMS, and below the HR TOF, uh, RMS mass error of 0.91 ppm. Uh, top 600 spectral peaks included and identified, and the bottom 700 spectral peaks included and identified. And then as I mentioned, the resolving power difference, and we'll, we'll leverage that throughout the, the, the content of this, of this, this talk. <coughs> Excuse me. Systems have to have stable resolving power, and they have to have stable mass accuracy. So this is a plot of resolving power here, mass accuracy here versus time. It looks very chattery with a little bit of noise to it, but if you look at the scale, it's actually quite tight in a relative perspective. With 100,000 here and 140,000 here, or we're consistently in the 120,000 range on the HR TOF, 
And for mass accuracy, again, one ppm, one ppm consistently within plus or minus one ppm mass accuracy. So the, the general attributes are there to be able to have successful experimentation and to derive the type of information that, that you can get from an FTMS experiment. Um, real resolving power data. The top is a crude oil sample looking at the O2 class of compounds. You see a nice profile here, some scatter because the measurement of the properties, whether it's mass accuracy or resolving power, are going to be intensity dependent. It's a statistical process. Here for standards, you see almost the same curve as you see here, which is, is very encouraging. Now let's get down to brass tacks. Um, this is the most challenging measurement that a mass spectrometer will need to perform in a petroleum sample, and that's the C3SH4, I call it exchange, but it's not literal, where you have two formulas, same nominal mass, differing by only a few millidaltons. Um, theoretically, this requires in excess of 85,000 resolving power to achieve it. Can we do it on the FT, or can we do it on the HRT? Actually, we can. If we look at this pair here, this is a distribution of a crude oil sample. Look at this pair, and you can see by the inset, we can in fact detect and resolve those two species that differ by approximately three millidaltons. And that lets us do a very robust characterization. Additional uh, critical resolving power or critical pairs. Um, Here's a, a difference that should be about 36 millidaltons. We measured at 30, it should be 36.4. We measured at 36 even. Uh, so we are spot on with our relative accuracy as well as our absolute accuracy. And then we can, of course, get information on homologous series, leveraging the accurate mass and the resolving power to create a lot of space. And this is a series of the C3 SH4 exchanges. So we can't do it just once, we can do it across an entire mass range so that you can track that content across the entire product. Ultimately the goal is to get information on what classes of compounds are available and what need be modified for processing. Here we extract the O2 class and the N class uh, from negative ion electrospray, so the naphthenic acids and the carbazoles from three different samples. So we can see some level of discrimination between classes as well as different types of petroleum samples. We can also get information on double bond equivalents by processing with PetroOrg software, uh, which again lets us see the distribution of, of compounds for processing purposes. And this can be, can be put into different visual, visualizations. Um, here a, a 3D plot or a, a heat map of sorts which breaks down, again, the naphthenic acids into its, their different forms, <coughs> indicating the, the rings and the complexity uh, versus either carbon number or double bond equivalents. <coughs> again, direct comparison to the FTMS. Here, the HRT is in blue, FTMS in red. Um, this is a negative ion electrospray looking at, again, the elemental distribution. Um, of those components with the different classes indicated at the bottom. The relative trends are very comparable between the two with a peak at the O2 and lower levels of S and N. Uh, this is an N of one, no statistics around this particular experiment. And then comparably the double bond equivalents between the two systems, FTMS and HRTOF, show very similar distributions. So, the information content between these two for an N of one is, is relatively comparable, if not indistinguishable. Um, again, another comparison, different sample, um, positive ion, ESI, negative ESI, um, broad range and distribution, this one much heavier in the N1 class for both, but comparable results from HRT and the FTMS. Visualization, this is, I think, uh, a very uh, pleasing and easy to interpret plot. Okay, you can see where there's intensity and you can see where there's not. But comparison of the FTMS and the HRT, uh, resolving power of 100,000 on the HRT versus 400,000 on the FT, very comparable distributions uh, with outstanding qualitative results between the two here. <coughs> 
finally, can you differentiate? Okay, we had one example uh, where we looked at the class distributions and we've had two samples uh, where we looked at um, elemental composition at a fundamental level, but can you really differentiate three different classes? So we have three samples here that we looked at by FTMS and HRT uh, from very different sources that would be predicted to have dramatically different elemental compositions or heteroatomic compositions. These are provided here for positive ion electrospray and negative ion electrospray. As you can see very clearly, broad range of distributions, nitrogen content and naphthenic content, so the carbazoles and the naphthenic acids uh, predominantly, and looking, them in a, looking at them in a more um, visual and elaborate uh, layout, you can see very discrete differences in, in this case, the NO2, where each has a very unique profile. And then here for the naphthenics, again, as a product of double bond equivalents, how does the distribution relate? So the, the TOF has a very clear capability of differentiating and breaking out the contributions in a manner very similar to what's been achieved with FTMS in the past. Um, and then in this case over here, this is just two different diesel samples profiled in the same way using negative ion electrospray, uh, showing the differences in distributions. So with, with the, the Sidious and the high resolution, um, we've been able to demonstrate that we have enough effective resolving power to answer the critical questions. The SH4C3 exchange being the critical pair. We have mass accuracy and system stability across the experiment to get reliable results. And we can extract information with the aid of things like PetroOrg software uh, to get the information content to be able to make decisions on uh, petroleum samples, how to process them, and where they are critically different. And then finally, what are the implications? Well, the, the HR TOF provides an effective, cost-effective alternative to FTMS, lower care and feeding, and it provides uh, HRMS to the masses of sorts. So now I'm going to transition to the to petroleum analysis using the GT, GC high-resolution platform. Uh, give some brief examples of its capabilities, where we've applied that as well. <clears throat> For crude oil classification and uh, some experimentation. <clears throat> what are the challenges? So heteroatomic compounds, and I, and I got to recognize Dave Alonzo for this data. Uh, Dave's in the back of the room, so if you've got questions, feel free, please. Sorry to put you on the spot, Dave. But. Uh, what are the challenges? Well, just like it was with the Sidious, it's heteroatomic species. Nitrogen content, sulfur content, oxygen content. These all create problems for catalysis and processing. And so what's that translate to for the, for the mass spec instruments and, and the platforms uh, available? You need to have broadband resolution. You need to be able to resolve things at low M over Z and high. You need uh, high resolving power. And you need to be able to resolve discrete compounds. Uh, and leverage all of this for isotopic information. Practical choice, we think, is, is clearly high-performance TOF. It provides a comprehensive platform with high-quality data, uh, and it's easy to maintain fast with high-resolving power. Let's we'll start off by looking at some light crude samples. Uh, here is the uh, total ion chromatograms for four different crude oil samples, and we'll dig into a couple of these in a little more um, depth. Looking at the aromatic classes, um, here are some naphthalenes and substituted naphthalenes to give you an idea of what the um, resolving or the mass accuracy capabilities are. As you can see over here on the far, my left, your right side of the slide, uh, mass accuracy is consistently below or right around one part per million, so you have very confident um, identifications. And that applies not just to the molecular ions, but also to the fragment ions. So this somewhat of an eye chart um, won't ask you to read. There won't be a test or anything on the mass accuracies. But the average mass accuracy is about 0.45 ppm across the entire mass range, which goes from small fragments to molecular ions. So a very robust platform with a lot of capability. Um, extending this, again, to additional polyaromatics, um, mass accuracies, again, to the far right, 
really emphasizing that because it's important for identification. Average of 0.5 parts per million for the mass, ac for mass accuracy for these aromatic compounds. And then finally, there's always other things in there that you don't expect, may not necessarily plan to characterize, but seeing them is always beneficial. Uh, it's usually, not always, but usually better to have more information. And these compounds, which were not necessarily targeted, uh, but were found, uh, were identified with the indicated mass accuracies, all shown here with this diversity of structure. And again, mass accuracies 0.91 for this class and suite of compounds. <clears throat> um, this is just a comparison. These are like crude oils. And then this is a biodiesel, a supplemented biodiesel. Very different profiles and very different challenges. Um, one way to supplement those challenges or to help to address that challenge of complex deconvolution or complex samples, such as this, is through deconvolution. Okay. What's shown here, my right, is, is a raw mass spectrum. But by applying deconvolution, <coughs> we're now able to leverage the accurate mass by getting a clean spectrum for a fame, which is deconvoluted from this mess. So we can get a clean, well-characterized spectrum to, to get a robust identification, even out of that complex um, chromatographic, uh, chromatographic display, as was shown here. Mass accuracy can also be leveraged in other ways. Uh, hopanes and steranes are biomarkers in the petroleum world, um, often done by nominal mass. Here, 1,000 resolving power. If we kick this up to 2,500 or 25,000 resolving power on the Pegasus HRT, you can see that this goes to two very cleanly, dis cleanly displayed and well-resolved species contributing to the signal. If we kick it up a little bit further to 50,000, you can see additional contributions at smaller levels. So the ability to get selective detection of biomarkers is achievable and potentially important um, in, bio, in, in characterizing the petroleum. And this high resolution lets you be selective and more accurate in that evaluation. And then finally, um, hydrocarbons and, and petroleum compounds provide a lot of challenges. One of them is they are very fragile, especially hydrocarbons. Um, soft ionization is important because that gives you the molecular ion so that you can do robust and confident characterization as opposed to relying to the fragments. Uh, the options historically have been field ionization, which is a little bit of art. It's very strong and well used in the petroleum industry, and it does require a specialized source. Chemical ionization is the other option. It's flexible, broadly applicable, uh, it too requires a special source or modified source. There are other options available, but those are probably the prominent forms. We've taken the chemical ionization approach, uh, and I've got a couple of brief examples here. Uh, this is a jet, jet fuel sample, simply looking at the inalkanes, but in the absence of molecular ion, you're relying on retention indices and relative retentions. Uh, if you have a compound that produces comparable fragmentation, you'll have a problem to resolving it and distinguishing it. However, by implementing chemical ionization, we get very robust pseudomolecular ions displayed here with very robust mass accuracies. Again, less than one ppm mass accuracy. So we can confidently identify the alkanes, although everyone knows that they're there. The impact of, of chemical ionization is seen here where you can have the prominent molecular ions, but you do still have fragmentation. So you can get characterization. You can understand branching. You can understand uh, saturation, unsaturation, and substitution quite well, but still have the benefit of the molecular ion for accurate mass characterization. And then finally, again, with the jet fuel sample, uh, chemical ionization versus EI. Okay, much more information content, accurate mass information, uh, as opposed to dealing with an EI spectrum, which is uh, in sometimes indistinguishable from one another. Uh, clearly, uh, this is applicable to not just hydrocarbons, but also to substituted compounds. Here, sulfur and oxygen substituted compounds, where you get very clean molecular ions, and deconvolution can be applied to the accurate mass entities. Um, and yet, yet one more example, M plus H, M plus H. 
mass accuracies in the one part per million range. So conclusion, um, high resolution TOF interface of GC is applied to petroleum characterization and it provides a robust mechanism for analyte ID. The resolution and resolving power we think uh, facilitate the identification at one part per million mass accuracy. Um, the identifications are strong and confident, especially coupled with chemical ionization where you now have the ability to get molecular ions uh, confidently and identify things in complex mixtures with um, the assistance of formula deconvolution and when, when you put all of this together have a very robust package of high resolution TOF uh, for petroleum characterization. So with that, uh, thank you for your attention.